Okay, hello. Uh, this little clip is going to be teaching how to use Silhouette pretty much from scratch. Um, and I'm going to repeat what I did in the Roto uh, Masterclass in Nuke, but this time I'm going to do it in Silhouette so you can sort of see the differences of approaches and how everything works. Uh, let's get started. So first off, I've literally just made a new project that is self-explanatory. You just have to give it a path. And then I'm going to do file, import, media. I'm going to navigate to my sequence. And it has to be an image sequence. This downloads as a MOV, but I converted it to EXRs because it has to be an image sequence for it to work in Silhouette. So once you click open, it will just drop down here in your sources. And this is where all your, uh, if you're a nuke, these would be all your read notes, basically. So you just grab it and you drag it into your tree here. And think of that like your node graph. And then whatever you click on is whatever you're going to see as an output. So on here, you have your nodes tab. And by default, it goes to the silhouette. And I'm going to grab a roto node. And you grab the first input here, plug it in. Grab the bottom input here. And I think it plugs into there by default. Let's find out which one it does by default. So you can either drop it into empty space, or you can drag it in the middle. And I was right. Brilliant. So what we're going to do is up here you have all your options. So this is, uh, well, we'll go through it as we do. But this here, this one with the dot, if I hover my cursor over it, this is a B-spline. And Silhouette's also got these things called X-splines. So I'll start by, um, did these Beziers? Yeah. So I'll start by showing the difference between B-splines and X-splines. So um, B-splines are pretty much the like universally accepted spline for everything. Every package has them, and they work. Hello? Ah, I've turned my overlay off. Oops, there we go. These work the same way they do in Nuke. Now, X splines, when you first look at them, react pretty much in a similar way, except they've got a couple extra options. So if I right click on one of my control points, uh, you can set it to this thing called Cardinal, where your edge, uh, your spline, will actually go through the dot. Um, I've never used this um, professionally, but I always thought it was kind of interesting because if you think about it, this way you can um, line your points up with the edge of your shape, and that's exactly where your edge is going to go. I'll explain how to move stuff in a sec. Uh, yeah, if you think about it, this is kind of, if you'd never used splines before, I think this would be the most intuitive way for it to work. If you press Alt. You can move new points further. Cool. So I'm going to delete these guys and let's start from where we started uh, yesterday. Rule number one is uh, stabilize the plate. So how do you do that in silhouette? Well, in the roto node itself, you've got this little box here, which looks like the tracker that hopefully you're familiar with. And you can just click on tracker and uh, click create. And what this will do is somewhere right here, it will create a little tracker. So I'm going to put it on this little dot here. And I'm going to press this to track forward. And that will start tracking. Um, Silhouette's tracker is really good. It does what it needs to. But it is not as good as Nuke's tracker. The uh, guy who used to sit behind me um, would always, always, always do all his tracks in Nuke and then bring them over into uh, into Silhouette. And so while this is tracking here, I'm going to show you how you do that. You make a tracker, you do your tracks, you do file, export comp nodes. Uh, let's just call this tracker. And then you can, where's Silhouette gone? Hello. I was thinking about it. And then you can do file, import. Interesting. Oh, it's down here, I think. Yeah, import. And then you can do your tracker.nk. And if I had any points, it would go here. So let's uh, do our track in Nuke to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to put a track here. And this time we're going to do four points. And I'll show you why in a second. Put a track here. Put a track here here and the 
a nice little quest. Uh, I haven't really uh, analyzed the motion of the sequence. So if this all goes totally wrong, uh, it's entirely my fault for not being prepared. And uh, while that's tracking, uh, I hope you got a hot beverage or something and have a cheeky little slurp. Uh, I actually hit escape there and it's carried on, so. Uh, Skynet is taken over, question mark. I'm also gonna show you a cool little feature of Nuke's uh, tracker because uh, I think it'll help you out a lot with some tricky tracks. Oh, I should also mention, um, this video was made possible by Boris FX. Um, I sent them an email explaining the situation and what I was trying to do. And they were really, really um, understanding and they uh, gave me a one month license to Silhouette. I think you can get a trial anyway, but um, that was crazy nice of them. They didn't have to be so accommodating. So I'm gonna show you um, Nuke's keyframe tracker while I'm at it. So uh, let's pick uh, let's pick this point here, and under settings down here, there's a thing called keyframe tracking, and that's what these options here are that look kind of scary. Um, I like to by default untick retrack when keyframe is moved because that means every time you move your keyframe, it goes like da -da 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 -da, retracking your whole sequence. And we're gonna set this to scroll, and your scroll means that as we make our keyframes, they're gonna go along up here. So what you can do is you can make a keyframe here and uh, go to another point in your sequence and you can make another keyframe for the tracker. Uh, I've picked a really bad point so I'm going to pick the one down here because hopefully he doesn't cross in front of it. And you can see the two keyframes now up here. Uh, I'm going to move this down here. And now what you're able to do is you can dash between these two making sure that they remain consistent. So if I just nudge that like that, that's about the same spot. Now let's do one in the middle. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna tap between the two. See this one's maybe slightly off. And then this one needs to be something like that. And now you can just click a uh, keyframe track and it will go between your keyframes. And if we turn the traffic lights on, we can see it um, starting to see how good the track is. The hand goes in the way there, so you'd have to manually fix that. But uh, we're going to delete this track anyway. And uh, now we're going to do what we did before. File, export comp nodes. We're going to replace this tracker. Yes, I do want to overwrite. And then we're going to do import tracker. And there are our tracks. So I'm going to delete this now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a layer for our rotor. So if you just click this button, you'll hopefully Oh, that's making a new object list. Oops, let me grab my mouse. Uh, whatever, uh, new layer. We're gonna call this, um, let's call this body. And we'll start rotating this guy's body. And now what you can do is you can uh, shift select all your trackers and then your final thing. And you can click apply. Corner pin tracking applied to active layer, amazing. Now. What you'll see is that Silhouette treats tracking uh, completely differently to how Nuke treats it. Copy slab. What it does is rather than applying a transformation to your image, it applies a distortion to your viewer. So if I now click here, which when I hover over it says it's your stabilizers, you can select the layer body. And if you look, that is now stabilized as we scrub through it. Look at that, that's insane. That's so good. So now, you can see my point from yesterday, all we have to worry about is the motion of the guy, but then when we turn the transform off, it does this. Sweet, so here we go. Same as yesterday, pick a nice point, and uh, I did this arm earlier, and it worked really nicely. I'm gonna make a B-spline, and again, like I said yesterday, Go along to the edge. We're actually just gonna do this part of his forearm. And then square off your um, your spline when you're done with it. 
And the reason you square it off is because when you start to get lots and lots of overlapping points, you uh, it just makes it a lot, lot easier to keep track of everything and make sure that you don't get any holes when things start to uh, do that. So we've got our spline, we've made it. Uh, we're done, right? We can write it out? No. So how do we move this? When you grab it, if you hit T, you get your transform option, like that. And if you want to grab individual points, you hit R. That's T for transform and R for reshape. And you've got two options here. You've got this one, uh, which is just the normal dot. And that will move everything equally. And if you're really good, you can move your points individually and you don't have to worry about it. But if you are really clumsy, like me, they added fairly recently the magnet tool. And what the magnet tool does is you can grab a point and it will apply a weighted transform along the shape, uh, which I've always found to be uh, insanely useful because it sort of enables you to soft transform uh, your points in a very sort of intuitive way. Uh, your other transform options are you can uh, scale and from these corner things, very familiar. You can also hold control and you will grab from that point. So you can get lots of um, lots of cool warpings and things like that going on. You can also uh, hit W anywhere on the screen and it will enable transforms from that point. And you'll see me use this a lot in a second and you'll understand why it's such a powerful feature. Uh, let's grab this. And then your arrow keys let you match everything. Hey, I still remember everything. Next up, if you want to check your alpha, you have output and your foreground. Output will view what comes out of your rotor node, which will be your shape with an alpha. Foreground will view uh, what comes into your uh, node. So I'm hitting one and two here to flip between those, and you can go through the whole list. We'll get to those in a second. So I like to do my roto on foreground because it allows you to move the shape without it having to process the alpha, and it should be really fast. Whereas this can get a bit sluggish, um, and I've had shots before where um, you just can't you just can't work on it uh, unless you have it on foreground. So what do these all do? You've got output, which lets you see your alpha channel. Foreground, I've explained. Background, um, I think, is when you have a second input. Color comp is a overlay like this. So if you want to check how it looks, if you hit zero on the keyboard, you can disable the overlay and you can check and say, oh, maybe maybe I need to move my shape down a little bit. And this lets you do that. Nudge, 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 nudge. And you can hit um, shift for larger movements and control for smaller movements. I really do remember all this. This is amazing. Um, what else is there? Uh, composite. Um, that will... I was of the impression this should pre mult your input, but um, for some reason it hasn't. But I think normally it does. Um, but yeah, you have lots and lots of options for this. Um, cool. So we're going to go back to our plate and we're actually going to do some roto. So in Nuke, the arrow keys control what frame you're on. In Silhouette, because you're uh, trying to streamline and work as fast as possible, it's X and Z. And if you notice, that means that you can change frame without having to move your hand from the left-hand side of the keyboard. And that's why it's so great. So uh, let's do some roto. So I'm hitting X to scrub through my frames. And I'm going to pretty much where this vertical linear motion ends. Pull down here, set my pivot point, rotate. That's this whole section pretty much done. And I think you'll start to see how satisfying it can be. Next up, I'm doing a... Uh, well, what you can do is if you hit control, uh, hit T once and then hit T again, it will select what you've got transformed, uh, selected, sorry. And then I can hit W on my keyboard, set the pivot, and I can rotate that round to have a shape like that. So if you look, that matches that edge so nicely. And I can just put my W here, just move it a little bit. And so moving forward, I can move my pivot point to about here, hit the W key, put that to there, Maybe this needs to come a bit. So I'm pressing Alt to pull from the corner, like this. And move this over slightly and nudge it with my keyboard controls. And you can just see there's so many ways to just control your splines. It's amazing. It's absolutely awesome. Something like this. And honestly, like Roto, uh, 
when you've got access to Silhouette, it's genuinely really fun. Like seeing the final output is so satisfying. Put W there, do my little rotate thing. Da -da -da. Let's go up here. Nice, and again, I'm viewing this whole thing through the stabilize so that everything I do gets that same stabilize effect. And it's remembering my selection as well, so I can just pivot from wherever I was, do that. Grab this control point, this control point. And let's see how this works in the middle. See here it's gone off a lot, but it can be pretty much fine. Let's do a little shift. Uh, this needs to come across slightly. Yes, it does. Something like this, this is fine. See here, it's going wrong, but I'm gonna find the frame rates the most wrong, which happens to be that one anyway. Uh, let's make sure to keep that snug. Pivot from here to keep that correct. Pivot from here to keep that correct. Cool, uh, maybe this needs to come up, but you get the idea. And then if I hit, uh, if I view the output and hit A on the keyboard, I can see my alpha channel. And now if you want to turn on the motion blur, you literally, under your um, uh, node options down here, you just tick enable. And then in your object as well, you may need to tick enable as well. And now you've got your shape with the motion blur. So if we view the um, color comp, yeah. See now we've got the right uh, thing, just like that. So if I turn off my stabilize, what you'll see is that even with all the camera motion, that is still sni sticking really snug. Um, yeah, so that's pretty sweet. Um, what else can you do? So we've done this. Next up, I'll show you how to. Um, keep everything nice and organized. So uh, organization is key for when you're doing Roto because otherwise your splines can get totally out of control. So next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a layer, I'm gonna nest it in the body layer. I'm gonna call this, um, call this screen left for arm. And if we put a spline in here, hopefully, ah oh no, wait hold on, we gotta put this in there. There we go, we'll keep that. And so now, within the screen left forearm thing, I can grab hit B for B spline. That's so smart. Uh, and do this. And we get a little thing. And then remember to square it off. I'm gonna come back and square this, don't worry. So keep it nice and square, and you just wanna have a bit of overlap. And what you wanna do as well, is you want to slightly over roto what you've got. So see how I've not stopped at the forearm? I've gone just a little bit into the wrist, and same thing here. Ah, if you want to zoom, by the way, is middle click mouse to pan around, just like Nuke, but it's shift middle click drag to zoom in. In Nuke, it's alt middle click drag. Something like this, something like this. And on this shape, make sure motion blur is enabled here. And if you want to toggle your uh, keyframes on and off, like say I'm happy here, I can just hit the, uh, it hit this dot, and that'll disable it and then turn it on here. And you'll see that that keyframe is now, excuse me, that keyframe is now automatically turning on and off. Yeah, there we go, look, turning on and off, which is great. Um, something else as well, when you're doing your roto, is even if you haven't got access to the frame, roto an extra frame either side, because for your motion blur, this is really, really important because it means that um, your spline will carry on this way. So when it does the motion blur calculation, it's got that information. So just try and get a rough estimate of the motion that the arm was doing. So maybe something like that. And now when we look at the motion blur on this frame again, it's a lot more natural. So if I uh, delete this keyframe down here, this is where all your keyframes are. This is just a normal date sheet. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with that um, from this frame. If I look, delete the keyframe, and then if I undo, I can get that keyframe back. As well, sometimes people like to, um, if they're particularly coordinated, they like to color code their um, splines. And I think that's really good. Oh, hello. Oh, it's disabled, that's why. 
Um, some people like to color coordinate their spines. I think that's really good. Um, because uh, I've had to pick up uh, Rotate before um, when I was doing some, I was reviewing some third party Rotate and it wasn't good enough. And there were a couple issues and we didn't have time to send it back, but we had access to the Silhouette scripts. So I just quickly opened it up and gave it a quick fix. And uh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, you, anyway, yeah, you get what's happening. I'm not gonna make you watch me Rotate, but um. Yeah, I hope that uh, it's really helpful. And in the next section, I'm probably going to do frame by frame and show you how to do frame by frame rotor and so on. Thank you for listening.